All right, so let's go ahead and talk about NVIDIA spending big money to acquire TSMC 5 nanometer. This is a little bit more tech news, and of course, typically in the core game, it doesn't affect mining that much, but this is a pretty big story because it will also affect the 4000 series from NVIDIA. So here we go. NVIDIA has allegedly gone on a huge spending spree to acquire some of TSMC's next gen 5 nanometer wafer supply for its next generation GeForce RTX 40 Ada Lovelace GPUs. NVIDIA's Ada Lovelace GPUs powering the next generation GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards lineup are expected to utilize TSMC's 5 nanometer process node. Both AMD and NVIDIA are expected to utilize the node for its next generation lineup, but it looks like NVIDIA is very serious in making sure they get enough wafer supply for its lineup, and as such, they have paid the Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturer several billions of dollars as an advance payment for 5 nanometer wafers. My drivers reported that NVIDIA has prepaid TSMC around 1.64 billion US in Q3 of 2021 and will pay 1.79 billion in US in Q1 2022. The long the total long-term multi-billion dollar deal is set to cost NVIDIA an insane 6.9 billion US dollars, which is much higher than what they paid last year. NVIDIA will not just use this money to produce procure wafer supply from TSMC, but also from Samsung, but it looks like that the majority of the amount will be spent on TSMC's 5 nanometer technology. Based upon previous rumors, there have been whispers that NVIDIA would utilize the 5 nanometer process node for its Ada Lovelace GPUs. This includes the AD102 SKU 2, which will be entirely monolithic design. Talking about the specific GPU configurations, the flagship AD102 GPU is said to feature a clock speed as high as 2.5 gigahertz that the specific tweet states that the GPU clock for Lovelace 8102 could be 2.3 gigahertz or greater. So let's take that as a baseline as previously leaked specifications to figure out where the performance should land. The NVIDIA AD102 ADA GPU appears to have 18,432 CUDA cores based on the preliminary specs, which can change, housed with 144 SM units. This is almost twice the cores present in Ampere, which was already a massive step up from Turing. A 2.3 to 2.5 gigahertz clock speed would give us up to 85 to 92 teraflops of compute performance. This is more than twice the FP32 performance of the existing RTX 3090, which packs 36 teraflops of F. P32 compute power. The 150% performance jump looks huge, but one should remember that NVIDIA already gave a big jump in the FP32 numbers this generation with Ampere. The Ampere GAA102 GPU offers 36 teraflops, while the Turing 102, which was the RTX 2080 Ti, offered 13 teraflops. That's over a 150% increase in FP32 flops, but the real world gaming performance increase for the RTX 3090 averaged at around 50 to 60% faster over the 2080 Ti. So one thing we should not forget about is that the flops don't equal GPU gaming performance these days. It also, just for the miners here, doesn't uh, all, you know, translate necessarily over into mining performance. It will really heavily depend on what they do with the memory, which here we go. Aside from that, leaks have also stated that the GeForce RTX 40 flagship would retain a 384-bit bus similar to the 3090. What's interesting is, though, that the leaker mentions G6X or GDDR6X, which means that NVIDIA won't be moving to a new memory standard until after Ada Lovelace and utilize the higher pin speeds of the GDDR6X of 21 gigabits per second for its next generation cards. Before we see the newer standard GDDR7, uh, the card will feature 24 gigabytes of memory. So we can either expect single-sided 16 gigabytes of DRAM or dual-sided eight gigabytes of DRAM modules. Probably see dual-sided. Uh, so 
that's one thing if you guys aren't aware essentially what they went with was putting memory modules on the back of a lot of the newer GPU lines the RTX 3080 and the 3090 for example which has caused a lot of heating issues admittedly or unadmittedly they aren't really admitting <laughs> at this point that there are temperature issues kind of the argument from the third party manufacturers and Nvidia themselves is that 110 C is within spec while that is true the thermal throttling starts at 110 C so because the memory modules on the back of the GPU are typically hitting 110 C you are losing memory performance which is where you can see most often in mining applications specifically as you know those memory modules on the back heat up and cause the hash rate to drop on your video cards. This is also affecting, of course, gaming performance, just not enough to be as as noticeable in the mainstream, unfortunately, because I think that's something that needs to be called out on both third party manufacturers and, a, and NVIDIA themselves, as it feels like they're just kind of ignoring that issue. So hopefully they would swap to front-sided. If they're trying to hit the full 21 gigabits per second on these GPUs, they are either gonna have to come up with a cooling solution for the backside memory that allows them to hit that speed, or they are going to have to put all the memory modules on the front side. And that's gonna be important because that will also directly impact mining performance. If they clock that GDDR6X up to that 21 gigabits per second, like they are claiming to be doing with the 3090Ti here shortly, then they're going to have to make sure that cooling is in place to support those speeds. It was down clocked to the 19 gigabits per second on pretty much the entire line due to, or the top end of the line, excuse me, due to the, basically the heating issues, but they don't seem to acknowledge that. Hopefully they'll hit that 21 gigabits per second, but what we could see, which would be really interesting, is AMD utilizing the new standard and hitting that 24 gigabits per second on the latest, you know, rendition of the GDDR6, it could be called GDDR7. And if they do that, we may see a flip back to AMD being better in mining performance. So just kind of some notes there that I think are important. So as you can see, we do have rumored, you know, preliminary specs here. Here's the Turing, here's the Ampere, here's the Ada Lovelace. You can see they'll be going from eight nanometer to five nanometer. Keeping in mind that AMD is already going to be on 6 nanometer for at least their low-end cards. We reported on that yesterday, so check that video out. A highlight should be out later today for that. We have graphics. Uh, let's see. This isn't too important for mining, so let's go ahead and obviously a huge jump in CUDA cores and theoretical teraflops. You got the GDDR6X with the same memory bus. So the only performance increase you're going to see is going from the 19 gigabits per second to the 21 gigabits per second. It's not going to be a huge leap in gaming performance or sorry, mining performance if this is true, unless they like either increase the bus size, increase the amount, amount of memory total, or, you know, basically you're only going to get that essentially kind of 10% increase in hash rate really for the 40 series. If this is all true to me, that means we're only going to see like somewhere around uh, 130 to 132 mega hash a second on like say an RTX 4090. The NVIDIA Ada Lovelace GPUs will power the next generation GeForce RTX 40 graphics cards that will go head on with AMD's RDNA 3 based RX 7000 series graphics card. There's still some speculation regarding the use of MCM by NVIDIA. The Hopper GPU, which is primarily aimed at the data center and AI segment, is allegedly taping out soon and will be and will feature an MCM architecture. NVIDIA won't be using an MCM design on its Ada Lovelace GPU, so they will keep the traditional monolithic design. Um, so 
Obviously a new manufacturing process is going to speed up the performance. It's going to look better in gaming. They, they have really high TGPs. So, and their memory performance isn't scaling up with the amount of increase in power, right? So they're saying at the base, at least expect 450 watt TGP, and it could go all the way up to 650 watts. As you know, the RTX 3090 is hitting around that 300 watt mining, uh, basically while it's mining. So you would be looking at, you know, almost a 25% increase in power due to, you know, the upgrades here. However, you would only be looking at a 10% increase in memory performance. This is all, of course, theoretical rumor and so on. So we'll have to wait until we get more information to really start making valid predictions. But this is kind of what I'm seeing here as far as the direction. Once again, like I said, if AMD does move into the latest generation of memory, uh, as far as for the GDDR side, you know, because we do have that HBM to talk about, but unfortunately that we're only seeing that really in data center cards from Nvidia at this point. If they did, we could see a flip in the consumer market for GPUs and mining performance back to AMD taking the favor there. And we've already seen, you know, down on the lower end, the AMD is kind of taking the favor away with the cards like the RX 6600 and 6600 XT. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show. Every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.